In this video, you are going to learn the easiest way of how to estimate the quantity of steel bars required on a project from start to finish. This method that I'm about to show you is better because it will help you save a lot of time when estimating the quantity of steel bars required. You learn how to prepare a bar bending schedule easily the fastest way and also help you make accurate estimation of steel bars required for your project. So be sure to watch this video till the end because you don't want to miss this. Let's first clearly understand what a bar bending schedule means. A bar bending schedule is a table that summarizes the cutting length of steel bars, bar bend shapes and diameter of steel bars among other components. To start making a bar bending schedule, we need to prepare properly to ensure saving time in other upcoming videos for each structure element. The rest is easier to work out if we prepare properly. Let's dive in into these 4 easy steps to make a bar bending schedule and within these 4 easy steps, I show you a simple hack or trick that I use to get things done the fastest way and accurately. The first step is to draw an outline of the steel bar spacing and this is how it's done. For example, if you intend to use a spacing of 150mm from one steel bar to another center to center, you first draw a guide like this one. This is a steel bar and the spacing in between here is 150mm. Therefore, the first steel bar is at this zero mark, the second one at 150mm, third one at 300mm, fourth one at 450mm, fifth at 600mm, among others. We keep the spacing at 150mm. Similarly, if you intend to use a spacing of 100mm for your project or for your calculations, first simply make an outline showing the number of steel bars at the top and then the spacing here at the bottom. This will save you a lot of time as you don't need to go through a number of formulas to find out the number of steel bars to fit in a certain space. You simply come to your outline here that you've already made and then you'll easily know that when I have an element that is 900 millimeters, I need 7 steel bars. For a 2.4 meters length, I need 17 steel bars. For a 3 meter distance, I need 21 steel bars, as simple as that. The second step is to draw an outline for similar pads or footings. For example, if this is our foundation layout for the project that we are going to work on, you'll come across footings which have the same size. This drawing here shows us footings with different sizes. Footings with the same size are always given the same name, meaning this footing F1 has the same size as this other footing F1 and this one also. These footings labeled as F2 have the same dimensions along the length, width and depth or height. So under this step 2, we draw a table or outline showing pads or footings on the left and the total number here on the right. And when we follow our example here, we have three footings of F1 with similar size or dimensions. Footing F2 we have five of them, F3 we only have one, and F4 we have three of them and total as 12. It's rare to find all footings on a project different from each other. Most footings are already similar to one another and that's why we categorize them according to their respective sizes or dimensions. This table outline is important because once we calculate the number of steel bars required for a single footing, for example F1, we simply multiply by 3 to get the total of all the three at once and we don't have to calculate for each separately. Or when preparing the bar bending shapes in the bar bending schedule, we simply find out the cutting length or bend shape for one footing and simply multiply by those of a similar kind. You have to draw this table to avoid wasting time on working out each footing individually. The third step is to draw an outline for similar columns. As it's done for pads or footings, discover similar columns and draw a table categorizing columns of the same sizes together. For example, if this is the top view of the foundation layout and you have the following columns, draw a table showing columns on the left and number here on the right. Our example details that we have two columns of C1, three of them are C2, for C2E, we have 5 of them and 2 columns labeled as C4, meaning that you calculate the number of steel bars required for a single column, for example C2E, and then simply multiply 5 to get the total number of the steel bars required for 5 of them. The fourth step is to draw a table showing the cutting length of the steel bars, bend shapes, bar diameter, among other components. On this fourth step is where we draw the real bar bending schedule. What we did in part 1, part 2 and part 3 is to help us avoid wastage of time in part 4. 
These other tables that we first draw help us to save time when preparing the bar bending schedule. This table has the reference number, the description, the bar mark, the type of mark, number of members, number of bars in each and the total number of bars here. We write alphabetical letters here and then the length of the bar in this last part. Reference number simply means a unique identifier for a steel bar, for example 1, 2, 3, 4, among others. Under description is where we draw the bar bend shape and that's where we write the dimensions for each shape. For example, for a steel bar in the base, we write here as 150 millimeters, 2 meters, and 150 millimeters here. For a bar in the staircase, we write here as 2.4 meters, 1.3 meters here, and 650 millimeters. Or for a steel bar in the slab, we write here as 4.5 meters, 150 millimeters here, and 2.2 meters here. This is an example of what we write under the description. This is the bar mark, which simply means or shows us where our steel bars start and end from. For example, this is base or footing F2B, which details that along here we have 20H12 code or bar mark 7, 150 millimeters for top one and bottom one. This is the type of mark or bar thickness as H12. This is the bar mark, which shows us that this group of steel bars will start from here up to here. This is 150 millimeters, which denotes or shows us the spacing of one steel bar to another center to center. This as top one and this as top two bar. Therefore, here in the table, the type of mark will simply mean the bar thickness such as H12, H16, H10, or H20, among others. Here at number of members is where our table that we've prepared in step 1, step 2, and step 3 will help us from, for example, 5 of footing F2. This is where we write the 5. If we have 3 columns of C2, this is where we write 3 here under the section of number of members. Then under number of bars in each is where we write the number of bars here in the drawing, put it here in the table. Then under number of bars in each is where our first table helps us from. To get the total number here, we simply get number of members multiplied by number of bars in each. For example, if we have 6 bases or footings of the same kind and each has 16 steel bars, we get 6 multiplied by 16 to get 96 steel bars as total and that's what we write here. Or if we have 2 bases or footings of the same kind with each having 10 steel bars, Total number here will be 2 multiplied by 10 to get 20 steel bars. These alphabetical letters denote sides or shapes of steel bars. For example, for a column that is simply one-sided, it will be A. If it's 4 meters, we simply write 4 meters here under A. If it's a steel bar for the base, this will be side A, here as side B and here as side C. If it's a steel bar for the staircase, this will be side A, side B, and side C here. If it's a column tie or a beam stirrup or a ring, this will be side A, side B, side C, D, E and F. For example, if this link or stirrup or column tie has 50 millimeters here for both hooks, 350 millimeters for the longer sides and 150 millimeters for the shorter side. This is what we write under the alphabetical letters here. 50 millimeters under A, 150 millimeters under side B, 350 millimeters for side C, 150 millimeters for D, 350 millimeters for E, and 50 millimeters for F. To make this total cutting length as 1 meter 100 millimeters, this is the cutting length and this is the bend shape. In summary, before making a bar bending schedule, this is how you prepare. Draw or make an outline of the steel bar spacing. Draw an outline for similar pads or footings. Draw an outline for similar columns and then finally make a bar bending schedule table. All that we've discussed about in this video has been about the introduction part or a simple overview of what the bar bending schedule is all about. And right now, let me introduce to you this video here on the right about how to prepare the bar bending schedule for pads or footings. I explained this in the most possible understanding standable way. I also give a hack in the video on how to get the most accurate calculations the fastest way. I hope you don't want to miss this.